everyone, welcome back folks to another episode of Fancy Tickles. I'm your host, Bryce Beeler, aka Uncle Wrecking Dude, Ballface. I got my hetero life person, my boo-boo kitty fuck of choice, James Maydahl, aka Wise Panda, sitting shotgunner. And then I got my Steve McQueen. I got my evil Knievel of choice in this two-cylinder beauty of a, what is this kind of car? It's a Chevy Geo Azuzu thing. Yeah. 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 Two-wheel drive sort of. <laughs> Driver, Sean Blankenship, a.k.a. Jolly Huge Penis, a.k.a. Jolly Green. And uh, we're back for another episode, first ever. We're just going to do it in the car. Yeah. Fuck it. Sean's been drinking. Jim's been drinking. I'm actually the only sober one in the car. So In the back seat, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're you the know. only one within reaching distance to save us if we hit something. No, we're in the garage. You uh, got your airbags in the front. Real, That's what you're at. Those are real trees back there and stuff. But we're just in the driveway chilling. Yeah. And we thought, you know, we don't really have a studio anymore. We don't got the space all set up like we did. Because, you know, we went from, what, 30 people to, like, the opposite of 30 people. And uh, we're just taking some time off from the show. Bryce was doing his new job thing. And... Uh, Talking to everything acquainted yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, shit's just going. So now we're back trying to just at least do an episode. Maybe you guys will bite the hook and come chill with us again. If not, I uncomfortably sat in the back of a really tiny car for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's what's new with the dudes? What's new with you guys? Shit, man, you nothing. You fight for whoever wants to talk first, as usual. It's more tired than a big dick <laughs> bat anymore. <laughs> more I bought... tired than a big dick bat. A big dick bat. <laughs> I bought a pair of Nike Air Monarchs, you know, the, the dad Plus, shoe. Yeah, dad it on. And I immediately then there went and bought a power washer and a blower and a weed eater. Something happened. I yeah. don't know what happened. <laughs> I think That's where I've been. 34, 35 is when you just really give up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just decide, you know, I can either be best dad or... Or worst guy that still acts like he's 15 years old, you know? But I will say, like, at least at least I'm the kind of dad that, like, I'm doing all that shit, but I'm wearing a Beavis and Butthead shirt while I do it. That's our generation, so, baby. So, that's like our, our Where's the Beef shirt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. That's funny that that used to be what, like, the most risque innuendo t-shirt would have been. You know, you see some grandpa wearing a Where's the Beef, you know, and you're like, that's a funny shirt, and he gives you, like, that really creepy Uncle Wink. He's like, yeah, where's the beef? <laughs> you're like, oh, fuck, grandpa's a pervert. Right where, on. <laughs> where did I hide it? Where did I hide the beef? That's like that joke about the grandpa. The little kid always comes over, and he's just so used to grabbing candy out of his pocket. Mm-hmm. And so finally he's doing it one day, and he's not paying any attention. His grandpa's like, you want to come get a piece of candy? And he goes, sure, Grandpa. And he comes reaching in and he's, Grandpa, there's, there's no candy. There's nothing but prunes there. <laughs> <laughs> he's just playing with Grandpa Nuts. Yeah. yeah, I've had some fun lately. I had an experience at the park. So it's not like a political thing, but I'm seeing an, uh, the extension of what happens when liberal parents have children that get to become 12 years old, you know, because they all haven't been vaccinated, obviously. Not, and I don't mean COVID vaccinated, but, you know, like the ones that actually work, like measles, mumps, rubella, you know, the whole woke class of people. Mm. So I had a situation occur at the park the other day that I've never experienced before in which I had to let somebody talk shit to me because I knew that because of their age, if I had ended up in the newspaper for pulling their arms off and beating them with them, that I, I'd be, like, in jail forever. So I'm at the park with Ollie, and I'm being super dad. I'm in a great mood. All the kids love me. All the single moms are like, he is so sweet with all these kids. I'm sure I'm going to get a phone number. It's one of those kind of days. I'm just fucking enjoying it. And from the, over here at the basketball courts, I hear a super loud, a fucking stupid, like, really loud, just like that. And i like, of course, I'm like... Huh, you know, kids do it every once in a while. And, and it's this, like, super out of shape. You can tell all he focuses on is, like, saying bad words and not actually playing basketball. You know, because he would, like, shoot it, and it would, of course, miss because he's unathletic and dumb. And, like, and then he'd be like, fuck, <laughs> like that, you know. And he did it, like, for, and his friends are like, dude. And it, this is before I even look over and give, like, the dad look. 
I'm just like, look, and I'm like, okay, whatever, and I go back to playing with the kids, having fun. You see the furrow brow of, I'm not giving my number to anybody today on the mom, so I'm already like, fuck, this kid is ruining it with two bad words. So, his friends are like, don't, you know, dude, don't, come on, we're in public. And he's like, I don't fucking care. So as soon as I heard the, I don't fucking care, I turn and I like, kind of nicely yell, hey, watch your mouth. And you'd think a guy covered in tattoos that's like a foot taller than you and telling you what to do would at least deter you from doing something. Oh, no, no. He's like, he from across the way is like, I don't fucking have to. And so I set the ball down that I was nicely playing with and I walked straight up to the basketball fest and said, hey, listen here, dude. It's like, it's a public park. There's a bunch of little kids. There's no advantage to talking like that. You're not cool. Your friends that are here with you don't want to be around you because you're talking like that, right? I was like, so maybe just don't scream bad words. It doesn't make you cool. He's like, I don't fucking have to listen to you. You're not my dad. And so I thought, <laughs> you're not okay, my dad. <laughs> I'm not gonna get in a kid argument with him. I'm gonna make him look super dumb in front of his friends. And I was like, how do you know I'm not your dad? <laughs> I said, your mom's fucked everything in a 12 block radius. It's a very likely chance that I'm actually your father. It's a very small town here, young this man. It's a small <laughs> town, and your mom's a neighborhood bicycle. So watch your fucking mouth. Right? And I'm not, you know, nobody can hear me. I'm doing it quiet. You know, like even his friends can't even really hear what I'm saying because they've distanced themselves from the adult covered in tattoos with, like, you know, I got like pentagrams and death snakes and quotes that talk about things dying on my arms so they're like they're logical children you can tell their parents had spanked them and been like hey look out for the weird dudes with tattoos they're probably nuts if they tell you to stop doing something just do it this kid obviously uh had either no father figure which i'll get to later in the story or like a really crappy father figure b is the answer in this equation so he's like i don't fucking have to listen to you anyway and i was like okay well just quit cussing i don't want to listen to it it sucks like there's tons of little kids around here maybe just be normal like don't be a pain in the ass don't look for attention in the only thing you're capable of which is opening your mouth I was right. like, you're obviously not good at basketball you're obviously not good at sports or holding your patience or having a good attitude or telling a joke I was like your friends are embarrassed look at your friends look how they're looking at you right now you're the thing making them not have fun he's like fuck you I'm gonna kick your ass and I was like listen kiddo I have killed people twice as big as you, let alone beat the fuck out of a kid with a little twig arm stuck in a sandwich bag that is you. I said, that's your physique. Look at mine. Be cool. I want to go play with my kids. He's like, he's like, yeah, you wouldn't say that if there was a fence between us. And so I was like, let's show off old guy athletics. So one hand on top of the fence, over the fence I go. One jump. Whoop. I said, all right, little dude. You want to hit a grown-up? Hit a grown-up. <laughs> There's no it. fence right now. No so. fence, no nothing. I was like, but if you strike me, I'm going to strike you back. And I'm not going to hold back because I can tell your parents suck and are liberals. And they probably suck and vote for the wrong people. They probably suck and have shitty jobs. I was like, and they made a kid just like you, and you fucking suck. <laughs> I said, so get froggy, 12-year-old fat kid. Take a pop. <laughs> you know, and he like, so you can tell he's doing the like shaky thing because he's never been ever contradicted in his life. He's like fuck you, I'm calling my dad. And I was like, that's what I was hoping for, because when he gets here, I'm going to beat his ass so that he can never procreate again and make another stupid <laughs> fucking one just like you. <laughs> Still, I'm being quiet, though. Like, telling the story, I get all heated, but I'm, like, saying these things real calm, real quiet. Hop the fence again. Go back to playing the park. Forget about fat, stupid kid, because he's over there being a fat, stupid kid. And I kind of hear him mumbling, whatever. But he's not saying anything else. Uh -huh. And no, just a disclaimer, not picking on fat people. I was like, but you can either be like a sweet fat person or a super jaded, upset, never try nothing fat person, right? So it's like it's the only two 12, types there are. And he's 12. And I'm thinking, maybe this will shape his future. Maybe he'll go home, buy some weights, start doing athletics. He's like, I'm going to kill that guy when I'm 18 and he's like 50. And I'm Bryce thinking, is really just hoping he's like encouraging, I'm, I'm this, encouraging kid this kid to turn his life around. Because yeah. like, I have my life turned around in a very similar way, just not by an adult. So anyway, <laughs> I can see him over there doing the I'm 12 and don't deserve a cell phone thing, which is using his cell phone for bullshit. So he's over there, bing, 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 phone up to ear. You know, he's like, and he's doing the thing where it's like, even though I'm 100 feet away from him, he's still trying to make sure I don't hear. And I'm like, oh, geez, I wonder what's happening right now. So I was thinking either the cops should show up, whatever. I'm like, I, you know what? At this point in my life, I don't even fucking care. So 
about five minutes later, a slightly taller than this 12-year-old man shows up who's <laughs> slightly wider and looks just as dumb and acts and talks just as dumb, but he's got a beard, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guarantee you that that's this ugly kid's dad because he's just as ugly as him, and it looks like a mix of whatever orangutan that guy had sex with. That's what made this kid. So the guy's like, hey, you. And I'm like, well, he's probably not talking to my son. So I said, ma'am, you do me a favor. Just make sure my son doesn't run in the road or follow me. And Ollie, he doesn't give a shit about anything going on. He's just swinging. I was like, could you just so I can go talk with this guy over here? I don't want to do anything weird in front of him. And she's like, I hope you fucking kick his ass. I will super watch your son. No problem. <laughs> and she, you could tell she, like, she's a woman I'd seen at the park before. So I was like, oh, this is all good. Everything will be fine. So I kind of walk over there. I got my hands in my pocket. That's the first lesson you learn. If you have your hands in your pocket and another man hits you and other people see that, they'd be like, he cheap shot him. He had his hands in his pocket and was just talking. Anyway, not that I've been in this scenario like 10,000 times in my life, <laughs> but that, sorry, sorry to say, mosey on over there. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? He's like, my son said you threatened him. I said, oh, no, no, I didn't. I informed him of what the laws were and why I couldn't destroy him right now in hopes of you, his replica, but old enough to destroy, would show up here. I was really praying he wasn't stupid enough to call the police. Here we are, dumb kid getting his dad beat up. I was like, your kid has got a filthy, terrible mouth. I was like, he's cussing in public for no reason. And he's at a basketball court that he's not even using because he's not athletic enough to get the ball up into the hoop. And the guy's like, you can't talk about my kid like that. I said, or what? I was like, you know how many men have told me things like, you can't do this or I'm going to kick your ass. And then they wake up in the hospital, at least a dozen. And those are all things that have kept me out of prison. I said, you're just going to be on a long list of people that have had things fall off of their body that used to be attached to them due to me because they got in my face. I said, take your fucking kid, get hot stepping out of the park. The guy's like, I should kick your ass. I was like, take your best fucking shot. I'll give you a couple for free. I said, but by the length of your arms, T-Rex fat guy. I said, super short, dumb guy. I doubt you're going to do anything that wouldn't keep me from then annihilating you legally. Like, I'm going to do it. You're going to wake up in a hospital about the time I'm watching television tonight. And he, you know, he's like, wah, wah, and he's just being super growly, but being so dumb. Like, he has no idea how to drag it into this kind of conversation. Like, you could uh -huh. tell he was always a get kid in a game of cut down that would, like, lose his shit the second somebody talks shit about his mom. Like, first, the old mama joke, and he'd be like, fuck you, this is cut down. Like, you lost. That's how you, you just lost the first game of cut down, and it was the first joke. You know, so he's I so he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you and I was like Again, man, just you gotta start. I was like, You're very obviously terrible at it because you haven't even begun to attempt to kill me and you're saying stupid shit, so either swing or get stepping. I was like, This is fucking ridiculous. I was like, I'm bored at this point. Do you notice how I don't <laughs> give a shit that you're in front of me? And anyway, so he's like getting all amped up, I'm like, Yeah, come on dude, fucking actually get amped up. There's nothing to build up a fight. You either are fighting or you are not fighting. And anyway, and so I just started laughing. I just was like, almost got rolling. I was like, you fucking suck. Your kid fucking sucks. Your wife sucks everybody in town. It's just a big fucking suck fest of sucky people. Why don't you go get in your shitty, sucky car and go back to your shitty, sucky fucking house and enjoy whatever shitty, sucky hobby you fucking love because you are just nothing but suck. Your kid sucks. You suck. Your wife sucks. Everybody fucking sucks. Fuck you. I was like, I'm about to step, and I don't want to go to fucking jail for doing it. And he fucking walks over to his kid, and he's like, says something. His kid looks at me and gives me the finger, so I start gut rolling. I'm like, oh, that's suck in sign language. That's awesome, dude. You learned another language. You have done something with your life today. You have learned or done something. So anyway, they get in their shitty fucking car, and they leave. Didn't even get a beat up shitty rain tank fucking dude. But kids suck. Kids suck nowadays because they know it. Like, the kid was, like, yeah. kind of leaning in at my face when we had the fence between us and shit. And I'm like, I can remember a time that if I would have, at this kid's exact fucking age, talked to an adult that looked like me, that that adult would have fucking, but ow, just giving you the fucking every bit of a slap. Like, right in the fucking face. And nobody would have said a word. Well, that you know right I mean? there is, like... They know That's, you can't do well, it there's, nowadays, there's so they that. act tough. I was like, this is a false sense of attitude. This is a false sense of security. Because you know that I'm going to lose everything in my life if I just slap the fuck out of you. Even once. If I would have just yeah. gave him one that he needed. You know, I was like, you know what I'd really like to do, kiddo? 
I wish I could spank you in front of all your friends. Like, literally bend you over my knee and spank embarrass your ass until you're crying like a little bitch in front of all your friends. Well, see, the thing I'm with, so sick of your generation. The, the, well, and that's the thing. The thing with that is what we used to do at 16 and 17 has dropped by four or five years. It, and again, like you said, it's because everybody knows that, one, it's the camera thing. Everybody's got a camera on their yeah. phone. Right. It's going to get blasted real quick, everything like that. And they're going to miss all the part that I was talking about. Exactly. They're going to miss the They pull it out at the right piece of shit. point. They just, it'll be right at that when I'm like, <laughs> right at that point. And that's when somebody will start filming. So it just looks like Bryce slapping the shit out of a 12-year-old. It's like, that's not what set this up. You know, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, you can never beat a woman. You know, and Bill Burr always says, he's like, you can't, you can never beat a woman. Say you get home from work. And she, you know, you go in the bathroom, and she's already drowning two of your kids, and she's working on her third. <laughs> yeah. Can you hit a woman then? You know, and it's always, why did you hit her? Kind of shit. And it's like, well, there's scenarios, just like twelve-year-old fucking liberal agenda, dumb shit kids that know the laws better than they know how to do a push-up. Uh-huh. Ugh, I mean, I was like heated right now, even thinking about it. Fucking <clears throat> kids suck. Okay, so here's another one too. You've got that situation, like, with kids. And then you also have the situation if you work in a job where the customer is always right. <laughs> right, when right? 90% of the time not. I had a guy come in to my place of work, and he wanted to exchange a tool from a specific company that exchanges tools. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. There are rules. There are rules. Oh, yeah. You can't just bring in a rusty piece of shit that's been... Like ratchet that's used, been used for a hammer for ten years, obviously, and be like, "Hey, I want a new one." <laughs> right. Can't do that. This one's wore out. Yeah. Like, yes, that's called wore out. Yeah, it's got to be a manufacturer defect. So, anyway, guy comes in, probably in his sixties, comes in. He's got a wrench that's broken in half and a ratchet that looks like it's been used, like as a breaker bar. As a breaker bar, hammer. You can't even see that it is said name brand on it. And, uh, <laughs> anyway. Funny, every poor person here that can't afford Snap-on knows exactly what company yeah. you're talking about, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I bring broke shit into the store all the time. And uh, you used to do it to Sears, because Sears didn't yeah. give a fuck. You literally could bring them anything, yeah. and they'd be like, here's your new one. Well, like, since said company sold out to Japanese company, company, oh, yeah, yeah, it's gotten a little bit different. But anyhow, guy brings these in. I start to explain to him, hey, unfortunately can't do that and he looks at me and he's like fucking cocksucker (laughs) and I just was like excuse me and I was like did you just call me a fucking cocksucker and he's like oh whoa and I was like you know what why don't you get the fuck out (laughs) and I like I went from like like work sense to like street like, get the <laughs> fuck out. And the other guy that was standing there working is looking at me like, oh, shit. And the guy was like, oh, I, I didn't mean you. I, I meant the, the store. And I was like, yeah, you looked at me and said fucking cocksucker. I said, this conversation is over. Get the fuck out. <laughs> no, you can't kick me out. I said, bullshit, I'll drag your ass out. <laughs> Dude, like, it was, it was a shit morning. It was a shit day. Like I'm so proud of you. I was just like a lot of people won't do that on their worst day. And the guy was just fuck, just that like, oh what? Like somebody I can't at a store is saying this to me. Like, <laughs> why aren't you just like bowing at my feet right now? Like you're supposed to. Well, it's like people that get the I'm gallon just... of milk that's outdated, yeah. and they'll drink all but this much of it and be like, it was moldy. It was gross. I. Uh, <laughs> So, you so can I get a new be gallon? Dead if that was moldy. Can I get a new gallon? Uh, I don't know. Or the people that eat three quarters of a steak? No, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't cooked right. Can I get uh, a discount on it? Oh, Tonight we went to God. we went to Applebee's for dinner. So we're sitting there eating, and they bring me the wrong meal. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, it, it happens. It's no big deal. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. accidents happen. You probably had that order a minute ago or something and you put that in just because that's what it was or whatever Uh like I wasn't like I didn't even ask the scenario but she's just like here's that and I was like "Uh, I kind of ordered something different she's like oh I'm so sorry I'm so so sorry I was like it's not a big deal like just like I just letting you know 
like we'll just swap it out whatever and it was rather different yeah like, it was it like was a it was totally different meal it was like a like surf a and turf with hash brown or, and hash yeah. potatoes and then the other one was um like i ordered a, an orange chicken rice bowl mm. Yeah, and so a just a smidge different. And if it hadn't had the shrimp, you probably would have just <laughs> yeah. went for it. Yeah, you know. Anyway. So, but then she was just like, I'll, "I'll get that fixed up for you." She's just gonna be a couple minutes. She's like, "Not a big deal. It's fine. You know, whatever." Comes back out. She's like, "And I'm, I just want to let you know, I'm gonna pay for this myself." She goes, "That was my bad." And I go, "I'm not even worried about it. I'm not tripping." And at the end of the day, like, I mean, accidents like that happen. Yeah. She fessed up to it. She didn't. I mean. She didn't give like an exact reason or whatever, but it was just it was like a boo boo. Yeah. And I was like, it's fine, it's cool, like I get it. And we ended. Up, she told me she paid for it. I ended up tipping her out the exact amount of what it was. I was really? like, just fuck it. Uh, nice. Like the bill was like thirty bucks, and I gave her a fifteen dollar tip. I was no. like, just call it even. Like no, don't even trip. Well, on yeah, it. and it's just, and it, she must have apologized fifty times. Oh yeah, and I was like, just like, stop saying sorry. Right, it's like listen. I have to wait for my sandwich to cool down, and I don't eat without my boo-boo anyway. We're watching <laughs> cage fights. Everything's fucking good. Uh, and I think good. I saw, it. Om- I almost thought, like, when she thought immediately that we weren't available, like, either one of us, like, if that was, like, if she truly believed that you like were my boo-boo type flipped. of thing. Yeah. Like, she's like, oh, snap. Because I think she was into you, Jimmy. I'm not going to Well, lie. when she said she, she was, was going to pay for it, I was like, me. oh. And, like, super talking to you, and I'm like, this fucking blonde. <laughs> How dare. Uh, no. Well, like, we had the conversation the night. You kind of just give off that vibe of, like, a man whore, kind of, in a sense. Not How? not in a bad way. I didn't say one nasty No, 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 no. That's not... It doesn't have to be nasty. <laughs> it's just that... That... That uh, aura. You can smell it. <laughs> she can smell the last woman on me. Or man, apparently. Oh <laughs> Let's lead that. Let's segue from that into that. So, <laughs> any man about... Yeah, I'm telling the story. Fuck it, Jim. I didn't say... I said I wouldn't, but I'm gonna. Are you guys about to break something to me? No, no, no. I have not had this sex is, no, with no, no, no. recently. <laughs> Jim's recently. off. Recently. Uh, Thanks for clarifying. Recently. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, as a typical man, I go on the dating websites. You know, I'm single. Uh... So you go on the, like the Plenty of Fish ones and all the other dating sites that exist. That's what they're there for, is to meet people <laughs> when you have zero time, but you still want like women to talk to you. Conversationally. You're right. So I see this extremely pretty woman. I'm going to put some air quotes up so you know where the story's going with this. <laughs> Named Jess, but with two Zs, on the old uh, Plenty of Fish. And I'm like, ah! she's really oh, pretty. Shit. She happens to be all, like online, and I'm online late. I'm going to say, hi, how are you? And I'm like, hi, how are you? She's like, I'm great. And at this point of the story, I'm going to go from saying she to it, just to clarify what this story is going to go about. And uh, so I'm like, I was like, oh, what are you doing up late? You know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I just got off work. Blah, blah. So, you know, just regular banter type of shit. Small talk. Small talk, and she only had like one picture, and I have like a face picture, and she's like, it was like, what do you look like? And I was like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, I have pictures on mine, and she's like, yeah, but like, what's the rest of you look like? Are you one of those like, you know, large guys with a cute face, and so you make it just your face, and then when we meet in person, you're going to have a big, giant, fat Albert body. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, no, I'm actually, I was like, do you have Snapchat or anything like that? <laughs> Which is like what you do and I was like and she's like yeah this is my snapchat so anyway I tell her mine and like a couple minutes later bloop, there's a little I added you button I was like hey how you doing it's Bryce from Plenty of Fish just to clarify ha 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 stupid joke right? I no see I do that too just yeah. so they're not like this is a random number from somebody that just got Yo, it well yeah. and it was it was a snapchat so it wasn't a number thing but at the same yeah. time lots of people on snapchat and if you're on one of those websites I'm assuming I don't know if it's just me. You could be Snapchatting and plenty of fishing a couple, three girls at the same time. Exactly. Anyhow, so I'm like, this is Bryce playing fish. And I get like a winky face. It's like, hey, how about I see what you look like now? So, and I'm like laying in bed. So it's not like I'm naked, but I'm not like have a shirt on. So I was just like, took a little like, hi, this is me thing, you know? And she's like, oh, you're cute, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, right on. What do you look like? And I get, I get a picture of a really, really cute butt, 
that like with really cute legs, really cute back. I was like, nice butt. What well, had like panties on or whatever and a t-shirt. Those ones, long mm-hmm. socks kind of picture. And I kind of was like, hmm, that's a really nice butt. I was like, oh, you're cute. Heart face, whatever emoji. And she's like, what else do you look like? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know. You should have sent her a picture with your socks pulled up and, yeah. own, and just some tidy whities The same thing, just tidy whities <laughs> and socks pulled up with, like, grandpa socks yeah. and, like, a T-shirt that says gone fishing. Yeah. Um, so, I know, so I didn't. I was just like, well, pretty much the same but with legs. Ha, ha, ha. Because I was getting this vibe really quickly, like, hmm. Like, this has got a very virile, getting at it attitude. And not because I thought it was a dude, but because I thought it was, like, a robot that's, like, going to use your pictures to make another profile on some other, like, way grosser website type of thing. You know, like, you send them a big wiener pic, and then they're like, perfect, but ching now you're on this website making me money type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't say anything. And it, it, now we will switch to it from she, was like, you want to see more? And I was like... Well, I'm a guy. Of course I want to see more. So I get this little short video with, like, like doing the phone behind them thing, kind of scanning around, see a nice butt, see nice legs again. I'm like, well, this is like a real video, not just a, I'm a scam video. I was like, wow, really nice butt, you know? And she's like, would you like... <clears throat> it was like, would you like to see even more? And I was like, well, of course, you know? <laughs> like, I'm a guy. <laughs> of course I want to see more. And so it's like a video from behind. I'm like, that is a really nice butt. And she's like, it's like pulling its underwear side. And I was like, this is one of those dirty chicks. What's going on right now? And, you know, you see like, woo, starfish. And then normal anatomy starts not happening. And I'm like, Uh that's weird. It's like 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 a Barbie. With, like how Barbies don't have vaginas, just it's smooth. And I was like, that's it. And then its penis falls out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, so when uh, were we going to tell me that you were a guy? <clears throat> and it was like a bunch of question marks. And I was like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not like, I'm not about that. <laughs> And I'm, but I'm not like, I don't, I'm not mad at you as a person. I just, it's like, you know, not my thing. But hey, cute butt. But hey, super (laughs) cute butt, right? Like, what the fuck is my brain doing right? So anyway, she's like, oh, you didn't see that on my profile. I was like, no, guys don't look at your profile. Like we scanned at the bottom rather quickly to look for the words like hiking, kayaking, sewing, barbecue, whatever. That's how it works. You don't read the whole thing. You just look for those things that you pretend you're into so that you can be like, I mean, who can't relate to like, like you're going to be like, fuck, she likes barbecue. I'm never talking to this bitch again. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, she likes hiking and kayaking. I'm never going to speak to her again. So you just bring those things up in life because I've done everything in life now, including learning the shorthand nomenclature for whether you're transgender, transvestite, transsexual, or pre-post-op. Apparently, and this is a thing. Me and Jimmy had to have a conversation about tonight because I'm like, I didn't, I never picked up that at all. So and then, I, no, let me get back. So huh. this is the part of my brain that went, now wait a minute. Wait, just a fucking tick. That did have a really nice butt. That did have really nice legs and a nice back, <laughs> nice shoulders, and good skin tone, and seemed well kept. I'm like, am I just learning something about, and so I spent the next two hours laying in bed being like, hmm. Ah, that just happened. Like, I had to look at that. And my first reaction wasn't 15-year-old bars like, Ew, gross, wiener! It was like, well, I didn't expect that. But it wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't immediately off-putting like you'd think. Like, you just, like, throw the phone down. Is it because I've been hanging out with you guys so much and the things that we talk about are so horrendous that finally my mind has turned it into real fucking life where it's like, Yeah, I'm really that guy. Like... Huh. Huh. Well, that wasn't off-putting. You're like, hmm. And so, here's what happens an hour and a half later. I'm like, I, I have to message back. I'm messaging oh back. My God. So I message back. I'm like, so are you like the mascot team leader of getting people to switch teams or something? You know, like <laughs> laughy face, whatever. And now I'm going to go back to calling her she. Because it's like, this is the part that I was like, 
this is kind of a chick. Like, this is so, she's like, she's like, well, it wouldn't be the first time or probably the second or third or even fourth or fifth time that, yes, I've gotten people to switch teams. I was like, I'm not switching teams. And I was like, furthermore, you live in Spokane. I was like, we might be having a different conversation if we lived in the same town. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going over there, obviously, but like, I was, and then I explained the same thing. I was like, I've, I, this is something I've never experienced before where I was like, it didn't gross me out. It wasn't like, you know how like when you show your buddy the video where it's like a really hot chick and she's like dancing and then all of a sudden she turns around and she's got a big old hog, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, god damn it. Yeah. You know, it was different than that. And I was like, what mental, what's, what's happening? What happened? To, what happened? You're becoming more accepting to the world around you. Right. Because or, that's not a weird thing anymore. Yeah, it's well, yeah, it's as vanilla it's not as taboo anything else anymore. anymore. Yeah, like being gay or being bi or being anything isn't even like like what else is new? Like you know, like right. it's not like you have to wait until you're thirty to tell your parents that the person, like say Jimmy and me, have been roommates for twenty years. You know, never had no girlfriends, and then after twenty years, you finally tell your parents like, okay, we've been a couple like the whole time. You know, like that <laughs> kind of thing. You know, and and like waiting for the shock and oh, it was it was just like. And like I've told now, I've told everybody that's not gonna listen to this show, and Jim and Sean this story, still haven't got a weird reaction on it. So I'm like, I always wonder like what is the thing that keeps people gay or not gay? Because I've been I've been me and Jimmy have been joking at it like all week long on Facebook where it's like we got Facebook married, we take pictures of us at dinner like me and my boo boo getting foo foo, like you know like <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like what makes a person gay or not gay and it's definitely not what i thought it's the attractedness to that person that Whether, person thank you yes, yes exactly. well see i think that's where the when they changed transsexual to transgendered right because that there too is not uh you're not because that you, you're not gay person was all girl and definitely more feminine than a lot of chicks that run around this town. Yeah. And that was the thing that, that's where the thought in my head, I was like, well, now, wait a minute. This thing carries itself. And I keep saying that's not even nice to say it that way. It's just I'm trying to tell the story. But, like, this person carried themselves with more personal care, with more fitness, with more hygiene, with more femininity than a lot of chicks carry themselves around in this town. And I just thought, that's fascinating right there uh -huh. like that you're attracted to feminism or femininity far more than just that somebody's the opposite sex because how many how many girls do you know that are just like the opposite and i'm not saying like rugged chicks or cowgirl <clears throat> chicks or anything like that but like the ones that just don't give no fucks you see them at walmart they're just like a walking sandwich bag of potato soup they don't give a shit that their sweatpants have got fucking food stains all yeah. over them or that their wife beater is letting their nipple fall out all the way to their fucking waist. Like, they just don't try. I was like, that chick doesn't deserve to be called a woman as much as this dude does that's trying. And it was just like this weird thing. Like, I had to lay in bed for like an extra hour and it was like, huh, that's weird. Masturbated to that boat picture. I did. So, like, next week. <laughs> so, next week, I'm going to go visit her. I'm going to make a I'll trip. Let, I'll let you trip. borrow the Geo. Oh, dude. For, oh, for this dude. Look, dude, I wish they could see this, but this is just like, if I was in high school and I owned this rig, I'd be getting so many blowies. Like, this thing has got the perfect spread for blowies. Dude, I told you. Sex in a vehicle with the sunroof is amazing. Or, yeah, like, that it doesn't have... Oh. That's because just that they lift. They can hold on to it. That's yeah. that lift and pick up and down, yeah. yeah. So either this conversation is about to get way longer or it's about to get way shorter. Have you guys <laughs> ever seen a chick do the it thing that you thought was actually uh, attractive? Yeah. I've been confused by that. Yeah, okay, Like, cool. it's not... It's, it, 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 it's not that you, are, you just get sidetracked by certain pieces that you are attracted to. Do you think it's a compartmentalization of the body parts, just like pornography? Yeah. Does? Because, like, if you go, you open an old school Hustler magazine or Penthouse or one of those ones, it's a it's an up close of a butt and a vagina or a booby. It's very rarely the whole person. Yeah. Especially in a natural setting. They're always on, like, yeah. the hood of a Pantera or, like, mechanicking on a rig while wearing pow cowboy boots or whatever and well, a bikini. And you know what I mean? Just totally not sensual situations well, so it's all about the part 
and the yeah. action that you commit with that part, not exactly. necessarily that something carries itself. With You're feminism. just initially attracted to a butt or a boob or something like that. Right, right. When I just watched the laptop go. Did you? Yeah, yeah we're kind of moved moving a little bit. Quite a bit, aren't we? Let's I'm sorry. sit still. No, we're good. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> we're I'm, good. I'm glad it's you caught good. that, though. Yeah, it did. It was like. <laughs> just a little? Yeah. Next time we'll sticky tape it down. <clears throat> okay. Okay. That's um, better. So, uh,. Sarah's sister has a friend. I've never met this friend, but Sarah was telling me about this friend of her sister's that is uh, trans, like, has had, like, the operations and all that stuff. Oh, shit. Um, What's and, her name? And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> tell, tell why she lives tell in later. Spokane. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Um, anyway, <laughs> I was just curious, and... I. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I was like, oh, who is this shit? Because they were talking about her a lot. And I was like, who is this? So, I, you know, I did the Facebooky thing. And I was like, what? That is a woman. Yeah. That is a very hot redhead woman. Ooh. And I was like. Wait, wait. Did and you I, just find Bryce's unicorn? A redhead dude hot chick? Maybe. <laughs> Holy. But I was just like so scrolling through and I'm like, my God. Perfect boobies. Perfect butt. Like. I was like, wow, this, I'm very attractive, but I was like, oh yeah, but, but. It was a dude. Yeah, well, so, so it's just like, I don't know, like you were saying, I think exactly what I think Jim I was said. more fascinated that it made my brain think a thought it hadn't thought before. Yeah. Like in that moment at 33, I went, was I just attracted to a dude? Like, <laughs> I was just attracted to a dude. For even a short time until I started just contemplating the whole thing. And, of course, then the compartmentalization and all those things come up where you're like, well, I was attracted to a part of a dude. And then I was extremely shocked when, like, a pee-pee fell out. And I was like, okay, well, that's unfortunate because I'd probably marry this person otherwise. <laughs> Wife number three. <laughs> hey, that's a hard reset right there. I go from third marriage back to first Marriage. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, hard reset, dude. <laughs> no, it's the first time I've ever married a guy. And you just always have to trail off and say it like that at the end. Well, I've never been married to a dude before. <laughs> so we had, I had an interesting uh, thing that I had to take care of at work the other day. <laughs> so. Hard uh, left. Uh, well, yes and no. We, I think we needed to change subjects. Yes and no. Everybody's getting confused, and I'm pretty sure everybody's <laughs> half hard right now. It's so, cool. It's cool. We're not judging. It's cool. I'm so not, I told the story. So I'm it works. Half hard. <laughs> this is true. When it's that big, it just holds weight in the end. You know. It it quits letting blood go. You know, like even a Pringles can with only four chips at the end is pretty heavy. I mean. <laughs> You yeah, know, you can feel those four chips in there. Like, oh, my Pringles ain't empty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. so work. I get I get called in to close the store that night. I'm in the back talking to Kane. And we've had re incidents recently where I guess there was like a shooting at a store somewhere. So they've changed the protocol of so like you don't intercom over it. Every department head has a walkie-talkie that they can conversate back and forth with, or if they have something they need you to take care of real quick, you just Get that phone, call, that walkie-talkie call, and you come take care of it. So something goes over the walkie-talkie. <laughs> sorry, dude. You guys do it all the time. I'm sorry, that was. I get interrupted finally. Sorry. Well, the wind's blowing in. That's the big. Oh, it just yeah. blew. And it's just straight. stuck in the car. <laughs> just... Oh, there's a stop thing moving. The... Stop moving. You're moving. Uh, I'm moving, sorry. Dude. I'm sorry. Wait, I can always jump out and go like adjust it. Yeah, we might have you do that. I don't know. Uh, that. You keep telling your story about your. Well, don't jump out thing. too crazy. Yeah. Oh. Watch out! We're going thirty. <laughs> and uh, calm down. No silence. This is true. So and now I can look at the computer and not make it <laughs> yeah, look weird. <laughs> all at the same. Take that chamois and put it underneath hey, it. Fix the, fix the camera. Oh, this is awful. Jesus, keep the show going. Oh, relax. Oh, this is awful. Relax. So that's got some grip to yeah, it. Yeah, that's better. So, get called in up to work. <laughs> that's Dude, all I need. Hurry, you gotta run and catch up! 
So there's, <laughs> we get called up to the front. We got to find a guy that just left the store. And so we're like, well, what, what's the situation? They go, well, we had a customer come up and tell us that he had his dick out <laughs> in the greeting card aisle. <laughs> and we're like, wait, what? Oh, uh, cool. What? And so we like walk outside to see if we can find the guy. It's like where he went so we can like 86 him, call the cops on him, whatever the situation needs to happen. So ask there's a younger a kid. What's that? Nothing. I said ask him on a date. Thanks, Sean. There. Uh, back to it. There's Perfect. a younger kid that knows how to run the computers upstairs. Uh-huh. So he calls him on the camera, on the phone, tells him to come upstairs, and they need you to run the cameras real quick. He goes, okay, what are we looking for? And he goes, um... Needs you to go to the doors and see if there's a guy that walked out with his dick hanging out. <laughs> and he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking for. So we get upstairs and watching the camera as the guy comes around. And he's you can see he's got a long belt on, like the old school, like the leather strap one. So yeah. he's got one of those and it's hanging out and it's trailing side to side. But then there's also something dead center in his pants outside of his pants but his pants are pulled up they're not down they're not unzipped there's nothing like where it's like hanging out but it it, to a certain extent it looks metallic like it could have been a flashlight or a keychain or something that he had just clipped to the front of his pants to fool people but then it also had a very phallically shaped (laughs) head on it (laughs) head on it and so we're like, is it a dildo? Is it, or like, is he just <coughs> What did the that, dude look like? I forgot dude, to ask you this. Just he had a like a big, dude. big, heavy leather coat on, backpack. Oh, it was definitely his penis. <laughs> yeah, see? But, well, and then the thing was, is like, it's, but the problem is, is so either it was a keychain or something like that, a flashlight, whatever, or he was just that comfortable with his dick over the top of his pants and hanging out below the t-shirt so you could see a good chunk of it. That's a lot of penis. That's what I'm saying. Either he was very well endowed and comfortable with having it pinched off and then still flaccidly hanging over or it was something completely different. We just couldn't figure it out. Huh. But yeah, it was an interesting. That was like that was the first time I've ever had to go find that. So hey, <laughs> if you're somebody that listens to Fancy Tickles and you've got a big, big giant, <laughs> and you have Let to us own know. a leather jacket and you wear a backpack when you go to stores like a fucking weirdo, maybe call in for an interview. We got to ask you about. We got some questions girth, for you. Yeah. Length, whether you pass out when it gets hard, things like that. These are all things that are important. Things that for Jolly Green can't answer me. for us. He can't because his work's like a Terminator. It just goes. It goes and goes. Well, then he passes out and he doesn't remember whether it holds. he passes out. (laughs) He don't remember anything. The blood flow, again, fills that Pringles can, so. Happened at the fair. Passed out? Yeah. (laughs) Getting an elephant ear? Yeah. (laughs) He's got a heart eating an elephant ear. Fuck now. Out. I did get one last year, so I was really enjoying that elf in here. People walking over you. Uh-huh. I wonder if people propping are their like, bike up on your dick. You know, like when that. you see people in the carts, like they're so big they use the carts to go around the store, and then you see their whole baskets full of snackums and shit you put in the microwave. Yeah. Do you think they have a relationship with food like I do now with transgender people? <laughs> like a morbid curiosity, but you kind of like it. That's a possibility. You know, do they have? Do they romanticize food? Is that why it's so bad? Well, there's those people that get off while watching somebody else eat food. Like, or, I have a family member that's the opposite of a sister. Let's just say that to for, to try and... Can, opposite of sister. What's that? Anyway. Uh, my brother. Oh, there you go. Anyway. And I only got three, so... Anyway, process of elimination. It's my brother. Uh, he has what I would call a romantic situation with food. Like, I've watched him eat, and he literally gets sweaty and, like seems to get excited and I've never seen him move faster than when he's putting food in his mouth and he's got to mash it all up quickly and he's washing it down with like drink and he and he's just involved in this plate of food and he's also a really really big guy so it's like what 
what what is it about food that could be so mistook as like another emotion like is it that maybe like because he's never been a lonely guy he was married for years and years and years and years and he was like has kids and like that whole nine yards but like stress well there's yeah, stress maybe but it just I, I've just always been curious because I've never really gave a shit about food like I can remember good meals I get excited for Thanksgiving and shit but when it's just me especially when Ollie's not there I'll eat like one of those frozen burritos you know what I mean? Like one, and I'll be like, oh, I'm good for the night. I don't need to fix a whole big nothing, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Sean's face in this has been awesome, like the whole time. <laughs> I never realized how much he's moves. His, he'll be like, mm, eyebrows, <laughs> smile, <laughs> eyebrows. If he just be doing shit, like Jim Carrey over fucking here. I'm so happy that I couldn't see the camera so much before as like this episode. Because I'm like, God, that's distracting. He's got some. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. It's just so funny to kind of. I've been all like zone in while Jim's talking. It's all right. He hit a deer. At least it wasn't. <laughs> he hit a deer. At least it wasn't the computer on I the know, screen. I know. I wasn't really paying attention. I, like, I should Shh. probably turn that fan off. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's gonna fucking burn up. Mm, it's good. It's good. No, Those I, ones don't I do need that. To turn my fan off. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna. Everybody pop out. Don't slam your door. This is just a potty break thing. Yeah. Pit stop. Yeah. Pit stop. Side of the road. It's crazy that tree never gets any further away. No. It's, it's just like there. One of them old it's like movies. It is. Hey, it quit working anyway. See, I told you. It was off, oh, dude. It was just good. spinning back oh, and forth. Oh, shit, it was off. God. Yeah, I told you it was the just... Just spinning one way, it and then it'd the spin the other way. Quind. It's the quind. <laughs> <sighs> I have a... Oh, nice. Nice, it didn't even wiggle it. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm a big boy. <laughs> Not the car. I mean, the, I mean, the car only weighs 200 pounds. That's true. This is, but it's like so. it's like a red wagon with a, a like a weed eater motor in it. But it is these hey, seats it's, it's, are fucking. Dark. Were they reupholstered? They had to have been. Yeah, my grandpa. Had I was gonna say these are slick as tits. Though. I thought yeah. they were. Uh, Colors. Like, yeah, they're not. <laughs> they're legit, brand fucking new seats, dude. Mm. I'd love to ruin this upholstery back here for you. Uh, can, um, I invite, can I invite my new friend down and we can just tear this up like Mike's fuck shack? What was that everywhere. movie with? What's it? No, there's a thing that I'm sure that they do to not do that, just like porno movies when you're watching one. Yeah, true. That Maybe. was the other guys you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah, the movie The Other Guys. Oh. Thanks for the fuck shack, Dirty Mike and them boys. <laughs> yeah. We used to call Blind Mike. He was our roommate. And uh, he does another podcast with a guy about UFOs and shit. Great guy. You should listen to their podcast. I don't know what it's called. But it's about UFOs or something. Hey, speaking of UFOs, did you guys see them fucking weird lights over the valley the other night? Yeah, I heard about that. It was uh -uh. a string of satellites. No, it wasn't. Has anybody got pictures of this event? <laughs> I want to see No, the oh, it's a Chinese rocket that's fallen down from Earth. Oh, that, well, from space. <laughs> it was from Earth. Listen, dude. Because the Chinese be... are giving us some more gifts. I mean, we don't they need already no more of their children. Toyota. What else? Do Angelina's need? got enough of them children. We don't need no more. Well, they gave us small, no, smallpox. They COVID. Gave us smallpox. <laughs> I think we're good on that. Yeah, no, we're they good. They might have gave us COVID, but I think we gave ourselves COVID. Maybe. I think COVID is. Is it still a thing? COVID. Yeah. I, Certain in states. Washington, they seem to think it is, but here it's not. So like. I was at a particular store that nobody in this car works at, so everything's fine. Good. But I went there, and it wasn't Walmart. And uh, <laughs> I, I've been getting my drinks in the morning before work. I get my stuff at lunch. Nobody's bothered me about the mask. And it's in Washington. And uh, I'm already up to the register. They've already scanned all my food. All I have to do is hand them $5 for my two drinks, and I'm out the door. Right? And the person's like, do you have a mask? And I said, no. And then the person's like, do you have a medical condition? And I said, depending on the week and what clinic I just went to, that's a yes, no, or maybe answer. I said, furthermore, it's not really any of your business. You're not a doctor, nor a police officer, nor anything that can ask me that question. That seems rather rude to ask it. I said, "What in what context? Knowing exactly what they meant. I said, but no, I don't have a medical condition. I said, I'm not gonna lie to you so that we can get through this transaction. I just don't believe in the mask thing. I was like, everybody around me has been sick at one time or another. Lots of people have been sick. 
really don't want to have this conversation because it's taking longer than if you would have just said 438 I hand you five dollars you give me my 62 cents and I walk out the door All right so this person's like well I need you to put a mask on before we continue the thing and I said okay those are your sodas then I'm going to leave now and I'm not gonna buy my breakfast not gonna buy my lunch anymore I said I'm sorry but I've been coming in here for weeks it hasn't been a thing Nobody's ever bothered me or mentioned it. And now you almost took the kid. She was like two seconds from, I had the $5 bill out. She's like here, this close. And just before she did the, the crab pinch to take my five and then I let go, that part said something about the mask. I said, furthermore, it seems really unprofessional for you to let me walk all around this store. I've passed at least half a dozen employees that most of them just said, hello, how are you? Hi, how's your day? That kind of thing, because I see them every day. Know a lot of them by name. And I said, it's really unprofessional for you to wait till, like, what if you'd have just taken my money and then asked me that? Are you going to hand me my money back that has all my COVID all over it? I've been coughing on it. Obviously, I don't have a mask. You know, I was just, I'm, and I wasn't asking in a mean way. I was just, like, addressing in that way. Like, well, I don't really understand why the, at this part of the transaction, now you're going to hassle me. I was about to give your store money, and now I'm not going to give your store money. And then furthermore, I'm going to stop giving your store the money that I've been giving it every day because you're really conveniently close to my work store. She's like, well, I'm sorry, but... And I was like, well, but don't be sorry because you should have just addressed me at the door like they used to do. Or address any of the other employees that didn't take the initiative to address me. Now you're addressing me at the register as I'm giving you money. That's not very nice. Right. I was like, you're always a really nice lady to me. I've seen you here a million times. And now, in, during this transaction, you're acting as if you've never seen me before. So let's be logical. I touch this store all the time. I touch people that touch this store all the time. I tell you know, like, I'm around tons of people. We need to start using logic with this thing. I was like, I don't want to yell or be upset because you're a nice lady. You've always been a nice lady to me. And I come here a lot. I want to be able to come back. If I come back, I will wear the mask because I don't have a medical condition. But we have just wasted at least four more five maybe six minutes now getting really close to that critical threshold of 15 minutes together within <laughs> a space that would allow the transfer of COVID-19 to somebody else that would cause the coronavirus or vice versa which way ever way it is I don't remember it's kind of an HIV AIDS thing but anyway I was like so why why would we do that like what would it what what made you do it now she's like well my manager just asked me to and I was like well, okay, but your manager has sold me stuff while she's not wearing a mask and I'm not wearing a mask before, too. I said, I don't understand. Anyway, the, back to the main point of the story is the whole COVID thing. It's getting to be more of a social stigma divide us thing again, just like all this Black Lives Matter and racist white people groups and everybody fucking hating on each other. There is some big division on purpose. There is a purpose to continually divide us and then subdivide us within our beliefs so that we all are only worried about our direct family. Uh -huh. And what scares me is like, what did Caesar do? He fed them and he divided them. He fed them and he divided them. What did the British Empire do? He fed his slaves and he divided up the world into other countries and pieces that were then the British Empire. So what are they like? What are they getting us ready for? What are they weakening our bond as Americans, as our bond as United States citizens? <coughs> what is the government ramping us up for? You know what I mean? And you know what's fun about the conversations we've had in this car? They've been heated. They've been super obscure, and I really think it's because we're in a car. I feel as if we're stuck on a road trip going somewhere, and you have to listen to my shit. Just have to. So I just go further and further on every single subject instead of, like, letting it carry on to the next one. But anyway, that's, that's what it feels like, is that we're being divided and made to not like each other. So, like, I'm taking it upon myself to like everybody. I'm gonna, I don't give a fuck what you're about. Unless it's like messing with kids or like doing something terrible, you know. Unless like, you're a sucky fat twelve year old, yeah. Like, then yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, sucky fat twelve year olds can kiss my ass, <clears throat> yeah. and I can't wait till civil unrest happens because that kid's like number twelve on my list now. <laughs> I think I think like, his dad's the, lower is lower on the list than he is. <laughs> like I'm gonna show up to their house when the revolution comes out, and I'll be like, <laughs> right at their front door. Fuck like, the revolution! You're going on purge night. Oh, if they come, dude. If that's what's next, fuck. Oh dear, that kid is fucked. <laughs> Everybody that hasn't gotten their COVID shot, you're just allowed to start hunting them now. <clears throat> well, see, that's not fair, motherfucker. Did you get your shot? No. Me neither. Because I'm sorry, 
I just I something seems fishy about it to me. And well, I and I have I a worries coworker me. that showed me a message from his friend, and this coworker's friend lives in Florida and got the Johnson and Johnson one. Yeah, and he's all like, and he and, he, and he, he was like, dude, just read this message from my friend. He's like, he's like, this will fucking spook the shit out of you. And I I can kind of verbatim the message. He's like, hey, friend. I'm not gonna use his name, but he's like, "How you been, man? Are you doing okay?" And 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 my coworker was like, "This isn't something this guy normally ever asks." I was like, "Okay." And he's like, "So keep reading." He's like, "Ever since I got this shot, I've had like what feels like a fever for like three weeks now." Uh-huh. And he's like, "Oh, not only that, my bones hurt, like my joints ache." I've never felt that before because he's like an athletic guy. He's older, but he lifts and runs and does all this shit. Yeah. You know, kayaker, one of those cool old dudes. He's like, furthermore, when I go to sleep, I don't get rest. He's like, and and then my coworker explains more. He's like, he's like, this dude is the coolest, calmest cucumber cucumber you've ever met kind of guy. He's just cool. He doesn't stress on nothing. He's always been a bag of fun. He's like, I've never been more worried about my friend's life. He's like, keep reading. So he, because he just kind of, I would like read it out loud, so he's like could stop me and explain what parts matter. Not, you know, yeah. he's a cool guy like that. So anyway, he's like, he's like, plus now I feel like I'm always worried about my friends. I have these weird thoughts, like not good things are happening. I have these weird thoughts that something bad's gonna happen to the people around me. He's like, and I can't get any sleep. He's like, I feel like I go to bed and when I wake up, I nothing. I have gotten no rest. He's like, and it's continually gotten worse for weeks, weeks. He's like, if it doesn't get better, I'm gonna go to the doctor and see what the hell is going on. Now it's kind of, and he's like, I'm just worried about you, making sure you're okay. Like super stressing, like you're okay. Like when you have one of those bad dreams where something happens to your friend yeah. in the dream and you yeah. immediately get up and call him, like, hey man, is everything cool? You know, like I'm still shook by this thing and it made me think about you. You know, and uh, that's what worries me is that there's like. What's the switch that would make everybody do that? And it, it's subtle. Like, mind control, and I'm not getting necessarily at mind control, but subtle hints are what change your day. Like, you ever notice something really subtly in your day, and then it appears prevalently in a dream? Where you're like, whoa, that was a nothing part of a conversation, yet it is now the focal point in physical form in my dream. And then I'm really thinking about that. It's stuck in my subconscious now because I had a big dream about that thing yeah and i've had those things happen you know everybody's had those a really common thing and i started thinking how would you subtly push a population in a way that it was maybe positive as a whole excited for the future as a whole into this constantly scared waiting for something to save it from this thing (coughs) now they're talking about the covid booster shot Yep. Where, oh, all of a sudden, this disease that's a virus, just like any other virus that our body normally deals with, not only needs a vaccine that doesn't work for dick, apparently, based on all the numbers of people getting COVID after they've gotten this vaccine. Well, and why do you still have to be segregated from... So if you've had both of your shots now, they're saying that, like, ball fields and shit, they're thinking about having COVID um, people that have had the vaccine sitting separate from people that haven't. So now, okay, I'm that, really glad that you brought that up. So check this out. One of the most dangerous are you afraid? diseases that you can have on this planet, yellow fever, um, you can get a vaccine for. So if you're going to travel abroad to, like, Africa, Central America, rainforesty type places, Thailand, blah, 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 the list goes on, you need to get a yellow fever shot. Because if you get yellow fever, you could die very mm. fucking easily and live a really horrible rest of your life at best with yellow fever. Mm. So, um, but when you get the yellow fever vaccine, guess what people do? They pack their shit up in bags and they pack their shit up in suitcases and they fucking go to Africa where yellow fever is. They fucking go to these places where yellow fever is and they don't worry about it. And guess what? 99.9962% of the time, exactly the statistic I found online, you don't get yellow fever. Now, 99.962% of the time, you do not die of COVID. Yet, we are getting shots and boosters and segregation and separation mm-hmm. and misuse of business and economy and all these trillions of dollars being spent on things in the middle of a deficit. What are they moving towards? Salvation. They are going to save everybody. They're going to come up with something where people go, you got to do something to fix this problem. Well, here's the answer. And what has the answer yeah. been so far? Gun control? 
ending of a pipeline, skyrocketing in the economy, closer to a deficit than or closer to a recession than we've been in a long time since the last Democratic president was in. And again, I'm not trying to make it political. These are facts. Yeah. I'm not for Republicans or against Democrats. I'm just saying certain things happen when Democrats are in, certain things happen when Republicans are in, and neither one of them are great. But it's all led to this moment that we're living in. This is a really weird time in history for us to be as supposedly intelligent as we are to be making the decisions we are. And yeah. it's weird. Anyway, anybody got any good <laughs> fart jokes? Hmm? Anybody got any good new ones? I'm trying to think. I heard a couple earlier today. Hey. So, you know, in a loaf of bread, you know how you have that... Like the the piece that what people call the heel, yeah. You can call it the butt, yeah. Um, so I heard that you're actually supposed to call it the whore because everybody touch it, but nobody want it. <laughs> <laughs> I have another bread joke. <laughs> so, if your wife comes at you with a knife to attack you, you should grab two slices of bread and put them on a plate and hand them to her. Her womanly instincts will kick in and she will make you a sandwich. <laughs> that's a Did you just life make hack. that up? That's a life hack right there. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So this is a little more drawn out storied one. It's I not like it. It's not quite the, that's the right. bread attachment, but there's been a lot of drawn out stories this episode. Yeah. Mainly this. me. I'm sorry. I'm not trying. <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're car. good. No, no, the fact good. that you guys can't, like, nudge me, you know, like, there's no nudging under the table. These people don't know what happened a lot. Like, hey, man, fucking wrap it up. So. I'm just hoping we can still see you in the back seat. It's like going to a Tyler's it's just, house. You gotta wrap it up. Bryce is the guy in the back that doesn't want his va- his face revealed on camera, <laughs> but his voice, you it's know Charlie's his voice Angels. no matter what. It's Charlie's Angels. So this woman, she goes to a gynecologist, and the doctor comes in, and he's like, ma'am, I just want you to know I'm very, <laughs> <laughs> just very sneaky, like, like like that scene in Aliens where the alien just comes out. And he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes to her gynecologist and that gynecologist comes in and everybody, he's like you know everything checked out fine and she's you know she's up in her age so she's there for you know the normal checkup and he's like I just want you to know that of all the vaginas I've seen in my life you have the vagina of a 20 year old for as old as you are and I don't mean that offensively but it's just it's very nice it's very very nice <laughs> And so she gets home and she's like, well, fuck, I don't know. She goes, I can see it, but I can't see what he's noticing. So I'm, I'm curious. So she takes her mirror off the wall and puts it on the ground and she's standing over it and she's looking at it. And her husband walks on the door and he's like, she's like, honey, I got, I got great news. And he's like, well, what's that? She goes, well, the gynecologist told me that I have the vagina of a 20 year old. He goes, that's fine and dandy, but just be careful. Don't fall in that hole on the floor. Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Safety first, folks. Safety yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just weird, man. You know, this is the point in most <laughs> podcasts when we go, and, folks, that's an episode. We love you. It was great. Really enjoyed being the guy in the back, like Charlie's Angels, for like five minutes. It's kind of made a weird vibe. We had some life revelations that I didn't think I would make public so quickly. I'm probably going to regret that because the people well, listen know. to this show, but fuck them. It's my life. They'll just send it. you dating. They'll set you up on blind dates. No, yeah. I just have a feeling I'm going to get some grinder requests instead of some Tinder requests. <laughs> and be like, I didn't know I had grinder. I must have downloaded this in the middle of the night when I was having my life revelation. <laughs> Jimmy used your thumb to download it for you. <laughs> Thanks, Boo Boo. I got you. Huh? I got you, Yogi. Yeah, is this, since we're doing this again, am I gonna have to get out the Superman costume again? Yeah, you have to watch. You have to. And at this point, it's so, really starting yeah. to get to where you're gonna enjoy it. Well, I've put on a little bit of weight in the last few weeks, so that's why there's spandex, bro. It's tight. That's the that's the point. If I don't see the cape flap, <laughs> and I'm gonna gets, be pissed. It gets me excited when you're all stretched in your little Sw- undie suits. Yeah, we purposely get you, flavor. like, 
size medium pajamas so that you're like all stretched into them and the ankles are up to like your knees almost. You got your belly hanging out. My belly. That way so that you can just reach, <laughs> just you can reach down and do the little finger thumb in your belly button thing. Like, boy. Mm. I wonder why big guys do that. You've seen that a lot. In, I've seen that a lot in my life where big guys what? will get excited and they'll like do the finger, one finger, even though their palm's all the way flat. And then the I one finger. I know when I go to McDonald's. I'm like, look at that. I'm like in the drive thru. I'm like, oh. hey, real quick. We were at McDonald's the other night. I had something that happened that kind of pissed me off a little bit. So there was a uh, Nespers County Sheriff car ahead of us. And Sarah and I had just been talking about cops and stuff. And, and I, I'm kind of on the side of, like, there's some really good cops and there's some really shitty cops. She recognized the cop from a client at work or whatever. So she's like, hey, on the thing, say, hey, whatever he's getting, we'll pay for it. And I was like, fuck it. That's cool. All right. So I was like, hey, so the sheriff ahead of us will pay for his meal. And she was like, okay, one second. And then she comes back with, he said no thanks. And it, for some reason, hit me like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, rude. Yeah. Anyway, it stuck with me all evening. It was like one of those things that just really bugged the shit out of me. Yeah, when you think about it, like. I was like, what? Why would they say no? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like... Also, why did McDonald's be like, hey, would you like this? Yeah, they never like, do that. They just let you do just it. Just like, do it. Oh, the car behind you paid for the food. Yeah. You know, what's he going to do? Throw a hissy fit? Like, yeah. Take my money. You so, know, I don't know. Point just gun at him. Take my fucking money. <laughs> it just hit me weird, but I don't know. Yeah. No, I had to get would, that out there. Uh, that would hit me wor- weird, too, because yeah. it would be like the one time I kind of like threw up the white flag, you know? Yeah. Like, the peace flag thing, you know, like... Yeah. Olive branch extended type of thing, like, and it's I care, you know. Like, hey man, same team, mm-hmm. you know. And you know what I think it is now with things like that is that they're so nervous to accept any kind of like generosity or what or something like that because maybe he's afraid you took a picture of the car and was like, hey, you know, uh, hashtag thin blue line. We bought him lunch today because of how hard of a job he does, and then. He gets to the station, and his station commander's like, Hey, Bob, your lunch wasn't at 1137 today. Your lunch was at 1245. You've been taking lots of extra lunches and beating small children with, with batons when you shouldn't. You're already in your anger management classes. You're barely a police officer anymore. You're fired. You're done. <laughs> you know, like, it makes you think, like, damn, yeah. was that the cop I want to buy a fucking lunch for? You know, you never know when you're True. buying the wrong cop well, for lunch. I get that. What if they start stalking you? They're like a single, oh. lonely, can't get to their transvestite girlfriend in Spokane <laughs> police officer. You don't want to get stalked. Sexually stock. frustrated. I don't think, no. And you don't want to get stalked by a cop because no. I've heard it's not good. That they are real bad about that when they get into it. Well, he's going to call the cops. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, I'm getting stalked by this cop. And they'll be like, well, what'd you do? What'd you do to get stalked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be like reverse racial profiling yeah. when you like, yeah. you know, a black guy be like, these Dudes won't leave me alone. What's going on? I've been pulled over five times today. I own a Lamborghini. I'm rich, not a drug dealer. You know, and they're like, well, it is kind of suspicious when a black guy drives a Lamborghini. You know, like, you yeah. motherfuckers, you know. Yeah. Like, same team. You know, I've thought that before, too. Like, if I ever get the guns pointed at me for any reason, like, not knowing I'm picking up a transvestite prostitute, thinking it's just a regular date or something, and uh, I'm like, whoa, whoa, check out the hat, dude. America. You know, look at the checkerboard button-up shirt. Dad shoes. Same team, you know. Same like, team. same teams. Don't shoot me, you know. But at the same time, I've never had the cops want to shoot me. I've had them question me really weirdly, though. Like, one time I got pulled over in my Jeep. Wearing regular work clothes, boots, pants, whatever. Cops like, license and registration. And then he's, like, staring at my face. And I was like, all right. I handed him on license and <laughs> registration, and I, like... Went from kind of plain face to like, I was just kind of like, <laughs> you know, did the thumbs uh, up. I was like, what's and he like happened? looked at me for a second longer, goes back to his car, and he's back there for like either five minutes or like three hours. I can't really remember. It all felt about the same. And he finally comes back and he hands me my stuff and he's like staring at me. And he's an older guy, so I know he didn't sleep with his wife or anything. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on, man? And he's all like, I know you from somewhere. He said it just like that. And I was like, all right. Like, from high school? 
Winky face, haha, ha, you look young for your age. Because he was like 50. Yeah. You know? He's like, no. <laughs> he said it just like that. And no. I was like, okay, well, where do you think you know me from? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, fuck, is this how people get shot that don't understand why they're getting shot? Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I used to cage fight. He's like, nope, that's not it. And I'm like, are you wanting me to say something where I think I know you from? In hopes that I will incriminate myself, because I don't know <laughs> shit. I just got off work. I don't even deal drugs anymore. I don't, I'm not sure why you're mad at me. <laughs> Trying to, like, uh, loosen this guy up, and he's like... And I was like, how about you tell me where you think you know me from, and I'll tell you if I'm that guy. He's like, nope. And I was like, okay, so did I have a taillight out? Is this how you get mad at people with taillights out nowadays? He's like, nope. Nothing wrong with the tail. I was like, was I speeding? He said, nope. He just kept noping me. I'm like, all right, well, I'd really like this conversation to be over because I'm super uncomfortable and I I know I haven't committed a crime at least in the last week. And I was like, and I know I don't know you from anywhere. I was like, other than you look like every other cop that hassles me and pulls me over, tell me the same fucking thing. I was like, I don't know what you want. And I obviously, if I was a really good criminal, wouldn't in, like incriminate myself. Anyway, it was just weird. Like weird instances in your life where you're like, is this is how people weirdly get shot because the cop is sure you're some piece of shit trying to hassle something out of you, mm. and then you do the other thing where you're like, what the fuck is your problem? I didn't do nothing. Leave me alone. I want to go. You're making me uncomfortable. Start yeah. your car. Pull away. Now you're in a high speed pursuit when you literally actually never did anything other than just get off work from a shitty job. Barely have enough gas in your car, so you're already pissed off that you had to pull over. Like, that kind of thing, you know? Well, it's like I was going... I used to get... <laughs> Sorry. This is, I know the story. I'm happy. Well, I no. Like it's, story. I used to get... Uh, one of the guys that I worked with used to download movies and put them on to my hard drive that I had. And so I was walking to his house to go. It was like 9.30 at night or whatever. And it was when we lived over on Libby, just off of 13th. So we're in oh. the county, so it's like a sheriff. He drives up, and he pulls up kind of beside me, and he goes, Hey! And I was like, Hey, how's it going tonight? And he goes, Oh, good. Uh, where are you going? And I was like, To a buddy's house? Oh! I just I just didn't recognize you in my town, so I wasn't sure, you know. And I was like, Well, uh, just to clarify, I've been here since I was like eight years old. Uh, I work at Albertson, so you can come down there any day, Monday through Friday, and Say hello if you want. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I've been here for a while. Oh, okay. And then he just drove off, and I was like, huh, huh. He's got that, like, like that small town, like, what you doing in my town? Bro? Right. Yeah. I, yeah, that's what I want to ask is, like, you have either got the memory of an elephant or... Yeah. You want me to incriminate myself? Well, then there, like you know, the like, other. What, what is there to gather from this Sherpaco style dragnet fucking questioning? Right. You know, it's where's like... her car? That one. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 dude, that story. That one. So I'm pretty sure I've told it on the pod before, but go for it. We're on a road trip. Well, yeah, as I say, might as well. Anyway. We're uh, not quite to Spokane yet. Not quite. <laughs> so you guys will be dropping me off in the next <laughs> two or three blocks up there. <laughs> so we, I'm at work. I just get off work and I'm crossing the street. And there's a sheriff bus coming down, and it's got a woman in the passenger seat and the guy driving, and there's nobody else on the bus. Or the van. Like, shuttle bus, van, whatever. And so she's pointing across the street, but she's pointing what looks at me. And I'm like, okay, I don't know you. Maybe you're just telling him that's where you need to go. All right, cool. So they pull in the parking lot. I'm crossing the street, get hoofing it up the block. They pull through the parking lot. Zip around the corner, out the parking lot, across the street, up the block, and completely around the block to cut me off. Pull in right there at, uh, like, Poplar, like, where the um, the silver comb and the pink pool and all that shit is. Mm -hmm. So, in that parking lot, right in the corner up there. Pull right into the corner. And she rolls her window down, and she goes, I just got out of court. Where's my car? And I was like wherever you left it at maybe I don't know I don't 
She goes, no, seriously, where's my car? And well, I was like, like I said in the last time in the podcast, it's so funny for somebody to accuse you of stealing. Oh a yeah, car. for anything. You have been so against ever even getting in a car, and on the left side, like ever. <laughs> oh, I've done it. Yeah, but just you know not. What I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, I just, get you. Like at this point, you're like it's kind of like old hat. Like, well, I haven't done it yet. I probably won't do it now. I don't necessarily need to. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, "Where's my car?" No, seriously, where's my car? And I was like, ma'am, I don't know where your car is. And at this point, the sheriff climbs out of the driver's side, comes around to the front, and he goes, sir, where's her vehicle at? What the fuck? And I go, sir, I don't know. And before I can even finish, he puts his hand on his gun and goes, where's her car? Sir, I'm going to reach for my wallet right now. Uh, I pull it out. I was like, my name's Jim Madoff. I open it up. As soon as I open it up, she recognizes that I'm not who the fuck she thinks I am, rolls her window up in shame as her face turns ghost white. He looks back at her. She's like, takes his hand off his gun. He goes, I apologize. Climbs back in the driver. And before he even does that, there's a customer walking on the street. I forgot about this part. Customer walking on the street. She goes, hey, Jim, how was work? (laughs) And I was like, well, it was good up until now. Oh, it's just got shot, but it's cool. And so he looks <laughs> at the customer, things, looks at the, the yeah, car. looks at the customer, looks up at the woman in the van, and she's like, "Nope, not him." Takes his hand off his gun. He goes, "I apologize, sir. Have a good day." Climbs back in the van and just drives off. And I was like, "Well, that's cool." <laughs> you know, three weeks before that, I was accused of being a kidnapper. Now I'm stealing cars. <laughs> getting I'm new in town. <laughs> what the black, fuck dude. is new? It's gotta be. <laughs> Well, I was oh, like, I got to stop wearing hoodies, backpacks, and shave my beard off. I, nobody ever recognized me. Yeah. No, but then they'd accuse you of fucking having committed a crime and changed your facial features. You know how many times in my life I've shaved my head because I got in a fist fight the day before? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Just about every time you ever see me shave my head. You know the first time you shaved my head? Yeah. Uh, I was at, like, a month, two months before that I was at the store, and a customer came up behind me, put their hand on my shoulder, and goes... Hey, Todd, how's it going today? (laughs) (laughs) And I turn around, I turn around and I go, and he just goes, oh, you're, you're not Todd. I'm so sorry. And I was like, nope, it's okay. I walk off and I shave my head and it's January. You remember that? And it just starts snowing right around that time. (laughs) And the receiving clerk in the back, she goes, why, why the hell would you shave your head in the middle of January? And it's like, I got tired of people calling me Todd. (laughs) She's like. Really? That's why I was like, no, that's not why I did it. But it was just fucking hilarious. And the look on your face <laughs> says so right now in itself. So, sorry. We're so glad they hire people like you. Right. Yeah, dude. I like Todd. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. <clears throat> but Well, shit, folks. You yeah. talk for like an hour and a bunch by now, I'm sure. It does feel like we've been on a road trip. I don't it think I just sat in a car and it for sore. no reason. I've drank way too much energy drinks. I've had to pee for a half an hour. This is a road trip. And we in a normal road trip like this, you could just lean out the back and next piss down time, the road. Next time, can I do mushrooms so I can go on a trip without <laughs> leaving the fucking farm type of thing? Possibly. I'd be, yeah. I think if Dan Cummins can do it on Time Suck, I could pull it off in here. I want to leave, scary, I wanna leave really this because so that then we can take that little clip that I just said. We're like, if Dan Cummins can do it, I can do it. And then there's a little black box that says... Three weeks later, just like on <laughs> SpongeBob or whatever, and I'm just in the fucking studio, just like, oh fuck! I can't do this. I can't do it. I can't do it, and I love everybody <laughs> the same, and we're all one, and this, we're all space dust. He's just licking the back of Jim's head for a half fuck hour. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Just giving him the old like fucking. Oh. The schnozberries oh. taste like schnozberries. Oh. Oh, boy. Well, we love you, folks. All Hopefully right, that one was... That was probably one of the weirder ones somehow. Was, but entertaining. Like the, fun. It was fun. I think yeah. the topics got... I, I was That was more open, I think, than I've ever been. Yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah. A little more so out of the cool. closet. You did, literally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we love you. Hopefully we can do more kind of stuff like that. Because, like, if I feel odd, and I'm already odd, how odd did they feel? It's true. You know? We want you and to feel. We want you to feel feelers. Odd. Odd. God damn. <laughs> I'm starting to think of that one Bohemian Rhapsody when they're just their faces are in. Oh, yeah. yeah. I see yeah. a little silhouette on <laughs> Scalaboo, Scalaboo. 
Anyway, uh-huh. we love you. All right, before we lose the laptop, <laughs> before something horrific fucking happens, before we get this one over, we love you. Again, I'd say like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on YouTube and Spotify. But fuck, dude, we're just kind of doing it for fun. If we get one view on this one, especially if it's our friends from Thailand or wherever that is, I'll be super <laughs> pumped. Thailand. Um, but yeah, we're going to fucking wrap this bitch up. You guys have a great week. Uh, if you have any ideas, again, I don't know why I'm saying this. We if always you have say, any ideas for episodes, hit us up. We always say it at the end instead of the front, where they're going to hear it. Yeah. No, people should be listening to, to the whole episode. We would like to think that they do, but they, they never hit us with the ideas ever. So, by us putting it at the end, <laughs> changes it all. So, anyway guys, we'll see you next week. Adios. <laughs> Bye. Bye.